Hi everybody, my name is Jack Wallen and I am here with another, everyone say it with me, Linux 101. Yeehaw, huzzah, and all that jazz. Jazz hands. So, I have a prediction I want to make, and I know this is a weird time to make predictions because most people make their predictions at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, but that doesn't matter. Because I wrote about something uh, on Monday, I think, and just found it crazy good. Like, I knew, I knew where it was earlier, and now that Alpha 6 has been released, I didn't expect what I came across when I was writing about it. I'll get to that in a minute. Now, I've been covering Linux and open source since 1999, 26 years. Seems like much longer than that. <laughs> but my modus operandi since the beginning has been kind of two things. Number one, make complicated things easy for people to understand so that you could jump onto Linux and not have to have a degree in computer science to understand what you were doing. And the other reason why, the other modus operandi I have is simply to introduce people to Linux, the distributions and the software and the tricks it has to offer. And I feel that that's personally, I think that's as important as is helping admins and developers comprehend certain bits and pieces of the operating system. Because it's one thing to talk to the, to preach to the choir, but unless the choir gets bigger, Linux is going to remain an underdog, which it probably will regardless. And so when I write about a distribution, a lot of people call it reviews, but I don't really approach my writing of, about distributions as a review because the way I approach it is that I have, I have found or used something that I like and I want people that don't know about it to know about it. And so a lot of times I actually seek out obscure Linux distributions, try them out to see if they're worthy. And if they are, you can bet I want to write about them because I want other people to know they exist because there are thousands of Linux distributions and some of them are incredibly niche. Some of them are major players, but most of them live in the in-between. And I like to kind of dig into the muck and mire to find something that I've never seen before or a major upgrade to one that I have used before, but the major upgrade makes something, adds something new or different to it. Now, let's just jump in since I've explained to you what I'm doing here. I have been and I think I mentioned this in my last Linux 101. I've been using System76 hardware for somewhere between 10 and 15 years. I've had three desktop computers, a Leopard Extreme, the first iteration Thelio, and the second or third iteration Thelio. I'm not sure which one they're on right now. I bought my most recent one, I think about a year ago, and it's fantastic. If you're in need of a desktop computer, look at the Thelio and don't look any further. That's how good they are. On top of which their support is amazing and the company's really cool. So I've been, I've been using Pop! OS since day one or day two or day three. I don't know which day it was. <laughs> and I've, I've really enjoyed it. And, and one of the things I like most about Pop! OS is that it seamlessly integrates, integrates, seamlessly, seamlessly integrates with the, with the System76 hardware. 
and everything runs effortlessly and wonderfully. Now, Pop! OS, the desktop itself, is roughly a, a, a GNOME desktop with a few tweaks. A lot of it by way of extensions, by way of GNOME extensions. Now, a few years ago, two, three, I don't remember which, System76 announced that they were going to be developing their own desktop that's not based on anything. And they were going to write it in Rust, which is a very fast language. So the idea was to create a, a new desktop not based on anything. I'm not going to get into why they decided to split away from GNOME. If that's something the company wants to explain, they can. But I'm not going to get into that. So System76 did something that's really, really, really smart. They could have, when they started, they were in the design phase of creating Cosmic, which is Cosmic Desktop is going to be the new Pop! OS, I think. I don't know if it's going to be Pop! OS with Cosmic De Desktop or Cosmic Desktop. I haven't read anything that's perfectly clear on that. But when they decided they were going to create this new desktop, the smart choice they made was to design it in such a way that it still, that it looked very much like Pop! OS. So that users who are going to be migrating from Pop! OS to Cosmic, the, the learning curve is nil. So when you look at the default Pop! OS desktop and the default Cosmic desktop, at first blush, they look the same. There's a dock, there's a top panel, there's the application overview, there's the workspace overview. I'm actually pointing to where those things are in the display in my head. You can't see it, but I can. <laughs> and there's a system tray with some clickable things. And when you click on it, the little menus drop and you can enable the tiling window manager portion, or you can adjust sound. You can do all sorts of things. So I, right away, I applauded them for making that choice. You know, on one hand, I thought, ooh, they have the opportunity to make something stupid cool that nobody else has done before and, 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 and release an inter a desktop environment that just blows everything else away. Or they stick with what works. And in this day and age, I think it's pretty obvious to say that sticking with what works is the smart way to go. But, and this is why I want to talk about, this is why I have a particular cosmic prediction to make. I guess I should have stated the title at some point. When I, I installed Alpha 6 of Cosmic Desktop as a virtual box virtual machine on Monday, I had already, been, I had already, I'd been using the alpha I've been not using, but testing the alpha releases from one to five and have found them all to be really good, especially for alpha. I mean, by alpha four or five, I was like, this feels more like beta. That's how good of a job they're doing. But that doesn't surprise me. So I downloaded a fresh ISO that had alpha six and and set it up as a virtual machine and booted it up and logged in. And my first impression was, oh, okay, well, still the same. Looks the same, feels the same, tastes the same, smells the same, sounds the same. It's the same. And then I started digging around and I started seeing things that I hadn't seen before that were really cool. Poor example. You could set application window, the color for the application window. So instead of the old traditional white or gray or whatever, you can make it look whatever, however you want. So I set it up for a nice soft little pink color because I like pink. So sue me. I actually like pink, orange, black. Kind of a, it's the softer side of Halloween. So I did that and then I 
made the dock completely transparent. And then I, I was able to shrink the top bar so it looks more like an sort of island or a pill at the top, made it slightly transparent, gave it a nice color, and I kept tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, and all of a sudden, I had a desktop unlike a desktop that I had seen before on Linux. Now, of course, you could do all of that with XFCE or any number of desktops. It's just that System76 Cosmic Desktop makes it easier to do. And it has other features that no other desktop environment has like the ability to quickly enable or disable the tiling window manager. And if you ever have any desire to try out a tiling window manager, Pop! OS is the way to go. Because you can use Pop! OS as a regular desktop, and if you want, click on the tiling window manager, you've got something completely different. And Cosmic carries that over along with all these other things. So essentially what you can do with Cosmic Desktop that I think is so absolutely brilliant is, you know how when you use GNOME Desktop and you install all those extensions to get it how you want it? Well, with Cosmic Desktop, you can pretty much get it the way you want it to look without any extensions. Now, sure, you've probably got some niche thing that you like from the GNOME desktop that you want to install. I don't know if Cosmic Desktop... No, I doubt. I don't think Cosmic Desktop is going to allow GNOME extensions because it ain't GNOME. It's something completely different. But knowing System76, if you had a feature that you really, really wanted and could serve a, a very specific and good purpose, you could send them a message and say, hey, I think this will be really cool on your desktop. Maybe you should give it a try. They would probably listen. I'm not saying that they would do it, but they would at least hear you out. And if it's a good idea, they'll probably think about it because they cool. Now, here's my cosmic prediction that you're all just been waiting with bated breath for me to utter. Oh gosh, can you stand the anticipation? I believe that when the first stable release of Cosmic Desktop is made available, it will leap up the charts to become one of the most desirable Linux desktop operating systems available. That's how cool I think Cosmic is. On top of all the, 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 the cool eye candy and tweaks you can, you can make with it, it's also a really, really high-performing desktop OS, especially when you marry it with System76 hardware. And I've said this before, and I know that they don't really like this, comparison, but System76 is almost like the open source equivalent of Apple. But they've done it much better because they've open sourced the operating system. And you can install the operating system on any off-the-shelf hardware you want. And what's another really cool thing about Cosmic Desktop, which is also a part of Pop! OS, is that you can download an ISO image for either NVIDIA or AMD GPUs. So if you have an NVIDIA card, you download the NVIDIA ISO and blammo, you're set. Same thing with, the, with AMD. So if you put all of this stuff together, it's really easy to conclude that System76 is doing everything right. And I believe that. I've, I've, I've been to the facility, I've talked to the people, I've met the, 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 the crew, and they know what they're doing. And 
if you're looking for a new desktop operating, new desktop distribution to consider, I highly recommend you download an ISO for Cosmic Alpha 6 or whatever alpha or beta they're on by the time you see this. Install it as, an, as a virtual guest with VirtualBox or whatever virtual technology, virtual machine technology you use. And then immediately go into system settings and start tweaking. See how far you can push the desktop. I believe you will find that you can push it pretty far. Much further than you could Pop! OS, much further than you can GNOME without extensions, of course. And much more easy than XFCE. Because don't get me wrong, XFCE is an incredibly flexible desktop environment. You just kind of have to know what you're doing to really get it to be what you want it to be. Cosmic, you don't. You just go into settings and click desktop and that's all, that, there you go. It's all there. Now, when I first, when I had my first glance at, at Cosmic, I originally thought, well, this is going to be a good desktop operating system, but it's not going to be very flexible. It's going to be one of those, this is our way of doing things. There you go. How wrong I was. Because they're letting us configure it the way we want to. And that's a beautiful thing. And trust me, you can make Cosmic look pretty beautiful. So, yeah, that's... Oh, and, and here's another thing. After you've spun up your Cosmic Alpha 6 desktop or whatever Alpha it's on, open up the Pop Shop. If you've ever used Pop OS, you know what I'm talking about. The Pop Shop on Pop Pop Shop is the the GUI app center on Pop OS. When you on Pop OS, if you open that up, it may open, it may not open, it may take a long time to open, it may open and then stall on you. It's a crapshoot. With Cosmic, you click that Pop Shop button and blammo, it's open, and you can start installing whatever you want. That's a huge improvement. And, and there's also all the other Cosmic apps. There's, there's Cosmic Text, Cosmic Terminal, uh, Cosmic Edit. I don't remember what, all, what they all are, but there's Cos... And those are all definitely written in Rust. And they fast. So, yeah, that's my prediction. I believe that Cosmic Desktop is going to be, if not the number one distribution of the year, or maybe next year, it'll be at the top because it's just that stinking cool. Now, you can't really say that about Windows or Mac OS. I mean, they are what they are. But with Linux, like I like to say, it is what you want. Anyway, that's all I got today. I hope that you give Cosmic Desktop a try it is definitely worth the time. Keep your eye on it, and as soon as it hits beta or stable, grab it and use it. And if you're a, currently a Pop! OS user, I believe when it hits stable, your desktop will transition from Pop to Cosmic. I hope that's the way it is. I believe that's what Carl told me, that how was, Carl's the CEO. I think that's what he said it was going, how it was going to work. So, and trust me, I am waiting with bated breath for that to happen. And I'm going to, I'm going to do a happy dance when I log in after an upgrade and I have Cosmic Desktop because I can make it look exactly how I want it. And I really dig that a lot because, you know, I'm a sucker for aesthetics. So sue me. Don't, don't, don't really sue me. <laughs> don't. I'm not worth it. Anyway, thank you so much for sitting down and listening to me blather on about something. It's Linux. We all love to talk about it and hear about it. And uh, I hope that you and everyone you know and love have a wonderful, wonderful day.